This is Strange Love Live, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Welcome to After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. So we haven't really put together the whole graphics with that theme yet, but we thought we'd play it again. That was John Nastos playing our theme. With, and with Clay Guyberson. With Clay Guyberson. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice version of that theme. And that was me getting way too close to the microphone. Yes, that was. <laughs> but we're going we're gonna to put together a whole nice uh, package that we... Uh, I did, that didn't come out right, but it is after hours, <laughs> no, it right? it didn't come out right at <laughs> no. all. We're going to put together a nice package. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get some blow and some what? tequila. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was, that was a conversation before we brought people into the show. <laughs> <laughs> what? I need to blow my nose. Good. Um, no. Why don't you introduce <laughs> I'm getting there. The I'm the getting couch. there. I'm getting there. Um, this week on After Hours, we're joined by Don Foster and Ryan Sniper. Hi. From Shazow. Hello, babies. <laughs> <laughs> Did you miss that again? No, I said welcome, babies. Oh, good. It was it was voted attention. by the room that oh, it's yeah. my thing. Absolutely. You, you you didn't do it last. I time. didn't do it last week, and you well, we did, you yeah. were like, oh. I think it's your hook. I think it's a hook. Yeah, I can't listen to it, but if you all like it, I'll we do like it. it. You yeah. got to do yeah. the babies. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's it's just one of those things. Welcome, babies. <laughs> programmed everyone. So before we go any further, because we have lots to do, I have to say, I'm not going to sing, but happy birthday, Miss Burroughs. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, birthday. birthday. Miss yeah. Burroughs. It's still your birthday for another 48 minutes. So. Yes. Although by the time, with the you know time delay and everything, maybe you know 44, but still, happy birthday, sweetie. <laughs> There's, there's new things here. New things are afoot. But first, we're going to have the studio audience introduce themselves. Uh, uh, okay. And then we'll move on to the new things. So and grab the no microphone. Camera. No camera. We must, you know, <clears throat> maintain their secret identities. <laughs> Witness protection secret program. Identity. Uh, this is Ryan Sweetie. What's your, tw what's your Twitter? <laughs> what's your Twitter name? Twitter? No Twitter? <laughs> This is Ryan's other sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> the studio audience this evening is full of people who love Ryan. <laughs> Everybody does, right? <laughs> is this is this my? Okay. Maybe this is my my cue. This is your cue. Now I got to remember how I'm going to do this. Uh oh, he's got to remember how to work the equipment. Yes. Dr. Normal. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You settle down there. Oh, I'm in trouble. Okay, this is the Dr. Normal cam. Look, it's Dr. Normal. Hey, everybody. <laughs> it's me. Back at you. Okay, that's I'm that, really tired. That's <laughs> enough from you. And now back to the show. Okay, so for everybody... Trust me, the kids are going to love that at home. Everybody who said, you guys need another camera, we get tired of looking at Cami Chaos and the guest, they're big, giant, purple, people-eating monsters. <laughs> I don't know. What do you want? It's 11 at night. It's after 11. I yeah, can't be cognizant been, all the it's time. It's been a long week. We've been working on some new tech here. It has. We've been doing a lot of... We've got... Like, close-ups. Mm -hmm. You know, close-ups on Cami Chaos and... That sort of thing. Yeah. So we're, we're working on new, some new new stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, hopefully it'll all go. And and I should say that uh, should I should I go ahead mention Christine? Yes, you should because. <laughs> so we I have love we have we have added one person to the Strange Love Live production team. Yay! So yeah. yes, yay! Exactly. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> Big yay! So Christine Kistner is our vi visual effects tech. Yay, Christine! Great. I love you so much. I Thank you for giving me part of this. my life back. Uh, ask her about this before. What? I, I offered her like VP of the world, <laughs> you know, <laughs> strange love domination. You, you said I don't, whatever you want to be in the credits. <laughs> you can be. I'll write CEO anything. CEO of mind control at Strange Love. Yeah. I don't care. Just yeah. whatever, you know. But yeah, no, yeah. very, very humble. Yeah, very exciting. Yes. So. It means that I might actually get one full weekend today with my husband. Exactly. 
Score. Oh, 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 oh. am I supposed? It I, is that where I shift? Two. Go back. Go back here. Because I might I'm get do one full one weekend time. day with I'm my husband. I'm getting my money's worth out of this. Hey, everybody. <laughs> the people on the audio cast are like, what the hell? You know, the funny thing is, is the Dr. Normal cam is the one thing that you didn't spend money on. <laughs> that is a Vintel, a vintage oh, no, old no, 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 We don't, I, yeah. I recognize yeah, that yeah, no, no. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to like, uh, we, we, we move, we get rid of that logo. <laughs> Pay no attention to the logo behind <laughs> yeah, the curtain. Exactly. Um, so. See, you got in trouble. I know. So. Now, on to... Now we're going to put Ryan to good use. Wine. <laughs> so, Ryan, tell us, you uh, said in the tech episode that you were a sommelier. See. Si. <laughs> yes, very out of practice sommelier. That's okay. Yes. Um, yeah, so uh, tonight I will be open a uh, Vigna Maggio um, Chianti Classico, the Terre di... I cannot read that script, but it looks like Prenzano. Uh, it's a 2003 vintage. Now, is that? Are you familiar with the, uh, with the uh, Vinmaggio and? Um, I've had a few bottles of Vinmaggio, but um, I'm not directly familiar with them. It's been a, been a little while. They're, um, so they have the mm. um, their Mona Lisa. Chianti Classico Reserve is called Mona Lisa because apparently, she stayed at the video. <laughs> you know, at some point in God knows when, right? Yeah. Um, and that's very nice. It's tripled in price since I first started drinking it in the, you know, late 80s, early 90s, right? As right. all Italian wine yeah, tripled or quadrupled in price. So, so we're no longer drinking a lot of Mona Lisa. <laughs> that's right. Do you like Chianti's? Do you like Tuscan wine? Um, I do. Um, I, I have a, a, a very, uh, I guess, soft space in my heart for um uh for tuscan wines in general um i uh i really love uh brunello di montalcino mm, absolutely yeah so um i think it's if i remember correctly just south southwest of um of the county region but um uh, brunello um is made actually with, um from the same grape as as uh, counties are made from uh, they're both sangioveses but uh, um uh the the people in the Montalcino region call it the uh, uh, Brunello um, uh, for little brown one, the little brown grape, and mm -hmm. um, so it's just slightly different, but um, but for the most part, it's it's still the same uh, strain of Sangiovese. Now Chiantis are often a blend, mainly Sangiovese, but other uh, a few other grapes. Um, are Brunellos 100% Sangiovese? That is a very good question. I don't know that I can answer that off the top of my head. Okay. I'd have to I'd have to look into that. Yeah. So is that kind of the, the whole thing where champagne is the only champagne if it's grown in the champagne region? Yeah, So something the Brunello like that. is a Brunello because it's grown in the region where they call it Brunello? Right, exactly. So um, there's actually this um, this label here, this here, pink hold label. Hold it up to the this, camera right here. Which, there you go. Yes. There you go. Hey, Camera two. <laughs> yes, we now can say camera. Fancy yeah. pants. Um, so the the letters here say D O C G, which um, stands for Denominazione uh, Originata Controllata Garantita. <laughs> uh, I, I which, think I just got wood. <laughs> <laughs> we at Strange Love Live bring you culture. <laughs> <laughs> um, so essentially, um, uh, what that means is it's and a, a crappy a, wine opener. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the the cutter. Um, the cutter is always um, very tough on, on some of these. But um, anyway, what that's saying is that it's a guaranteed um, appellation of origin, which is um, essentially <laughs> the peanut gallery is lively. <laughs> right, <laughs> um, which is essentially just to say that um, that it's it's a guaranteed source, that it's guaranteed that 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 wine came from from that location. So. And actually, if I recall, they brought that in the, was it the late 50s or the early 60s? It was kind of a response to the French classifications that Italian wine, was it the story that Italian wine had gotten kind of crappy and they, they, they right. wanted to bring back the regulations to exactly. raise the quality? Exactly. And um, it, it's essentially because of, uh, I, I believe it's primarily because of Chianti, but um, it's kind of the idea that... Um, um, everybody started labeling their wines as Chianti, um, even from other regions that weren't in the Chianti region of Italy. 
Um, so they were trying to essentially bring back and, and restore the name of Chianti, and this was the method of doing so. Um, so these pink labels um, show that you know, proof that they've actually passed the um, the the wine laws and the quality uh, the quality tests. Um, that some of these bottles have actually been sent to a lab and have been sampled to make sure that that they have like the great compositions that they say they're going to have. Um, and, and they also have a number on here, um, which is, let's see, this number here, I believe. The yeah, top right number? Here. Yeah, yeah, just, so this number right here, which, which states that, you know, um, that an individual label was printed for each of these bottles, and each bottle does have a, a specific number that goes along with it to, to kind of be sure. So in, in Chianti... There are also Chiantis with a rooster on the label. Correct. So can you tell us a little, in, in layman's terms... <laughs> As he fights with the bottle. <laughs> um, in addition to... Um, is that cork a little dry? Or it's been... Well, I'll yeah. it down for about a week. Yeah, so. the, the cork's fine. It, the, okay. the cork screws a little. Yeah. I've, um, I've been telling you for years that that cork screw is evil. And now I have someone to back me I up. I can get it to work. <laughs> so... Um, so the so some of the Chiantis have a rooster on them, correct, and some of them just have the the DOGC right. label. Right. Uh, what's the do you, do you know the significance of the rooster or what what that means? I don't. Okay. I don't. Um, but uh, yeah, I just um, I I believe that the rooster is involved with Chianti Classico in specific as opposed to Chianti. I think you're right. I think yeah. it's I think it's a Chianti Classico. Right. Um, uh, um, or it designates Chianti Classico, but not. I don't know that all Chianti Classicos actually get the rooster, and maybe it's like one of those controversial. I actually, yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah. know about that for sure. Well, uh, can you tell us a little bit of Chianti Classico? Chianti. Doctor Normal is so excited right now. <laughs> Last week he had a, a jazz musician, and now he's this. Yeah, we're, we're actually. He's freaking we're actually, out. We're doing really well. We had jazz last week, and now we're doing wine this week. So we're pretty much here's the after lesson. That we pod fake. Here's the lesson, we're tech people. It. He doesn't give a crap about your tech. All right, hey, unless hey. you can bring something else. Hey, I do tech. Thank you. Unless you can, unless you can bring something else, you just just shoot right on out of the studio. <laughs> nice, Liz. You coming on next week? You better bring something. Oh, Liz. Liz will. We, we will have. Yeah, Liz will be. Uh, I know. Wonderful. We're very excited um, about Liz too. I think. Thank you. Um, I think Chianti Classico is a smaller region within the Chianti district, which is all in Tuscany. So Exactly. Um, the uh, Classico region, as it were. So, so essentially, um, I mean, in theory, the, uh, Chianti Classico is kind of a higher quality mm -hmm. um, than Chianti is. So... Um, uh, it, it is a smaller region. It's a, it's kind of a it is a subregion within the entire region of Chianti, mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's kind of based around specific hills that that have the higher quality, some of the uh, the better soils and whatnot. So terroir, as it would be. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, exactly. The uh, the terroir. Terroir. I'm sorry. So is it really the better soils? Because uh, and I never have any idea where I pick up these little bits of information that are probably inaccurate. But don't grapes sometimes grow better in more difficult climates and rougher soil, and because they have to struggle and then they have a more concentrated flavor. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I have information. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, we can do a little wine around here. <laughs> and and probably the um, the best example of that. Uh, well. Uh, everybody would would fight me with this, but um, one of the one of the greatest examples I think is kind of in the uh, the Chateau Neuf de Pop area of France. Uh, is that the that's the Rhone, right? Correct, yeah. correct. So that's around the Avignon area. That's where um, the Pope moved <laughs> moved the Vatican um, in the 1300s, and it stayed there for approximately seven years. So Chateau Neuf de Pop. New home Guy liked his wine, right? <laughs> exactly, and I think that's the primary reason that it was moved there, actually. Um, but essentially, um, um, the 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 soil beds there are all rocks, and they have these these mm -hmm. huge rocks that are, are called um, I think uh, galets, galets, um, uh that that just kind of 
absorb the sun and the sun just kind of like bakes into these rocks all day long and then um these rocks kind of heat the ground underneath it um uh, through the night and kind of keep the uh, the vines warm um but um the the rocks it's it's just nothing but rocks all the way down through the ground uh so there's like very little dirt and so these these vines have to the rootstocks have to just keep digging and burrowing and burrowing down into the ground um and it takes them you know sometimes 20 yards before they can get um to a place where they hit like the water source to, and and to they find get, like underground moisture and, exactly yeah. And, yeah and get all of that those nutrients so essentially when you um when you taste the wines um, a lot of what you're tasting is all of the the types of rock that they go through. The minerals the that are minerals coming from in them. the soil, exactly. Nice. Exactly. Are you happy, Doctor Norman? Oh yes. <laughs> so let's. I mean, I'm sure we're we're perfectly ready after drinking Pinosis, everything to to taste this wine, right? Our palates are. Perfectly I stopped prepared. drinking the Pinosis oh, sure. for a few minutes. <laughs> um. So this is um smelling yummy. So um, one of the, the one of the things that um, if you're doing a blind tasting of Chianti Classico, there are a couple um, there are a couple key things that you look for. Um, for me, one is the um, the presence of pencil lead, the the graphite smell. Yep. It's kind of mm -hmm. a, a very difficult thing to pick out in a glass, but um, but it just kind of smells like a number two pencil that used to hold it uh, uh, when you're in grade school. Um, the other thing um, is is kind of a, a real dusty component that kind of uh, that kind of springs out from the glass. Um, uh, just so we're assuming that our glasses weren't dusty to begin with. Well, yeah, <laughs> no, so, no. <laughs> that that just kind of helps. So it's it's the terroir of the glass. So <laughs> so. Um, but uh, I mean, this to me smells very much like a a, a true Chianti Classico. It's it's kind of got the um, the the almost um, burnt and dusty um, uh, blackberry and uh, and black cherry notes, and um, it's it's got that graphite definitely. Um, and there's something else uh, that that kind of comes along with it. There's there's a type of flower. It's just kind of springing off the nose, like almost, almost um, on the end, but I can't quite, can't quite place I'm, it. I'm getting a, a little, a tiny bit of truffle, a tiny bit of, little tiny bit, kind of with that, that little Bordeaux kind yeah. of, but very subtle. Right. Just kind of barely, like right at the end there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Long moment of silence on Strange Love Live. We actually should have music for this, shouldn't we? <laughs> kind of. I, I, I can kind of put some on. <laughs> I, I should have uh, watched a little Gary Vee beforehand just for there a little inspiration. <laughs> I don't think I could ever muster up that much energy. Though. That's right. Actually, that's, so. that's going to be next week's show. We're actually going after Gary Vee. Like, <laughs> right Strange Love Live is now the wine show. Right Cammy's on. just going to get like <laughs> jump out of her seat and just get... <laughs> have, have you talked to Cammy about that? Uh, no, no. You might want to talk to Cammy about that. <laughs> I, I could talk to her for you if you'd like. <laughs> She's not going to like jumping. Yeah, so this wine's uh, six years old. It's a uh, 2003, and it's still um, it's still got um, I guess solid uh, solid tannins, which you can kind of feel like kind of grip the the cheeks on the um, on the way down there. Um, so um, I think it's a wine that's still got um, maybe three to four years that you could you mm -hmm. could put it down. Um, it'll be great um, great wine for um, Pairing with typical Tuscan foods, like a pork sugo mm. or something like that. So, <laughs> so do um, little pork sugo over a fried polenta and maybe a side of like sautéed spinach. And uh, we do a lot of that around. Yeah. Can Strange Love Live go to an Italian restaurant now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd like some polenta and I'd really some like point. some spinach. When we get those Field sponsors trip. in, right, we'll be doing like live remotes from you know, <laughs> Italian restaurants. You know. I, I need some sautéed spinach kitchen. right now. Yeah. <laughs> in a way that yeah okay we've got some spinach upstairs could you go cook it for me doc yeah so the reason <laughs> i i um i found this wine in my local supermarket and knowing the 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 label 
from their Chianti Classico Reserve is called Mona Lisa. Better for worse. It's a mm-hmm. gray label. Um, it's imported in Portland by the same... The guy's been importing this for like about 20 years, along with some really nice Brunellos and whatnot. <laughs> and this wine was uh, on a very significant discount, under $10. Oh, wow. Thank you, awesome wine lady. Yeah, which yeah. is very hard to find these days yeah. for a nice uh, Classico that's put together pretty well. So I bought a bottle right. just to see if it was just screwed up or whatever, but knowing the label, I yeah. gave it a shot and was very happy and went <laughs> back. Case. <laughs> right on. Okay, now for those listeners and viewers that are not wine fanatics, I think we should move along. That's right. Actually, I was going to ask one last question uh, okay, about Okay, you wine. go right ahead, hon. And that is, we we were talking about the structure, the nose, like the, the graphite and uh, minerals. Do you find that, especially, you know, in the last 10 years, that the palate for wine has gotten into the... You know, it seems like wines, especially domestic wines from California, they've turned into these what you call fruit bombs, right? They're um, young. Um, they've got they're very fruit forward, um, often high in alcohol content, and in my opinion, not too well balanced. We've gotten so used to that that when you pick up some structured Bordeaux that's like twelve, thirteen percent alcohol, it's like it seems like the taste of the consumer has moved. And, and of course, we're also not, a lot of people aren't put, laying anything down to, to, to see what happens over right. time. Right. I mean, do you, have, have you found that over time? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, what it comes down to is um, kind of why the internet is so popular. It's about instant gratification. And right. people don't want to wait for 50 years for a wine to age perfectly. They, they want it um, in a week. <laughs> Or so. So, um, yeah, uh, there's um, uh, a couple of techniques that, that winemakers are using, and the most prevalent one, I think, is um, micro-oxygen, <laughs> micro-oxygenization. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't get that out. Um, but um, it's the idea that you blow tiny bubbles of, um, of, of air into the wine as it's aging. Otherwise known as the Don Ho method. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Sorry. Old reference. <laughs> Very bah, good. Bah, bah. Yes. <laughs> um, but, uh, but the idea is that it will... It will age the wine prematurely, essentially, so that by the time that it hits the bottle, um, it will have been, you know, the equivalent of aging it um, seven to ten years, and so it will be much more likely to be ready to drink as as soon as it, um, as soon as you open up the bottle, even if you just purchased it a week ago. So that's kind of what people are moving to. Um, uh, wines tend to be very high alcohol right now, and um, yes, very fruit bomby. Um, and in, in my opinion, um, I think they're, uh, they're, they're creating high alcohol fruit juice and not mm. wine. Um, uh, wine to me, uh, exhibits the earth in which it was grown. You can taste the soil, you can taste the region. Um, you can, you can almost feel the, <laughs> the love of the winemaker's hand, you know, as, as he created this product. Um, so, uh, so I guess it's almost the difference between a, something created by a farmer mm-hmm. and something created by um, uh, someone who is in the business of making wine. Yeah. Is that trend turning around, though? Um, I, th- I think you see um, a lot of backlash starting to happen now, um, and I'm not really sure what's going to happen. Um, I think that a lot of this originated from um, Robert Parker and the um, uh, uh, his 100-point system. It seemed that that the higher the alcohol, the more fruit that was shown on this wine, um, the more likely it was to score a 98 and be <laughs> worth $150. And so everybody just kind of followed suit with, with that and, and uh, ate it up and, and believed it. I, you know, I mean, if you're, if you're drinking a Zinfandel, right? Right. And it's 15% alcohol or 14 and a half. That may, I mean, that's a Zinfandel or an Amarone, yeah, yeah, for yeah, example, where much. they've you know, dried the grapes and they've got a lot of sugar and a lot of high alcohol. Right, right, right. That's the nature of those. But when you pick up a Pinot Noir that's like 14% alcohol, that's a Pinot Noir. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that, that is such a, um, it's a burgundy. I mean, it's a, right. it's a, a delicate wine. Right. right? Yeah. yeah. And, and so those great, those great wines of France, um, you'll rarely see them over 13 and a half percent alcohol. 
Right. Um, some of the great Bordeaux of, of like 61 were at mid 12s. I know, I know. And yeah, and uh, they, they've aged fine and, and they've, you know, made beautiful wines. Not to mention you have a nice glass of wine and by the second glass of wine you're like shagged out on the car- <laughs> your right. friend's carpet. Like, exactly. Oh, Jesus, it only takes it? one one glass. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going to break your heart, Dr. Normal. I was just going to ask him what... Uh, two more. I got two <laughs> no, more. No, this is let's, not let's the wine-making episode. Yes, you can talk about it. Oh, wait a minute. Real cork oh, or a screw top? Dr. Normal. Um, it, it depends on the wine. If it's going to be um, something that's... Short- no, 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 don't say Boone's Farm versus, you know... <laughs> if it's if it's a short-lived wine, if, um, uh, something that's not going to age more than five years, um, cork, uh, just a regular cap is fine. Mm-hmm. Um, something like a great Bordeaux, I'd kind of rather have it in in a corkscrew, um, if nothing else, more for um, just the uh, the um, the process of opening the bottle. And so this is when I'm going to ask a question. <laughs> the oh, sorry, I tried to get him away from this, but when you get the corkscrew, I mean, you get the pleasure of you know opening the bottle, but you also can deal with the fact that. We've had more than one bottle of wine that we should have enjoyed that was completely corked. Oh, yeah. And wouldn't a screw top kind of eliminate that problem um, to some extent? In theory, yes, but I don't um, I don't know that um, there have been enough studies to show how a wine ages um, mm-hmm. with, uh, with, with a, a cap on metal it. Metal contact. Um, yeah, does the metal contact have anything to do with it? Um, there's also the idea that, um, that that corks when you when you put a cork in a bottle, um, it still has the ability to let air seep in and out mm-hmm. through the cork. Um, so so there's the idea that that there are minuscule amounts of air that are kind of coming in and preventing it from from getting stagnant. So w- what's the truth? I, I don't really know. Um, what's the right answer? I, I don't really know. So until um, we have some beautiful fine handcrafted, lovingly made wines with a screw top. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for 20 when, years. When the great Bordeaux and Burgundy producers yeah. start producing wines and putting screw caps on, on the top of it, then we'll know then that, that they've figured out the but, process. Uh, but yeah. to be fair, to be fair, I think that um, that uh, there are some good uh, domestic wines that are actually have, have gone screw top. And there's, mm-hmm. there's, there's some, you know, some time and some data involved. So, I mean, yeah. it's not just like it's... A brand new thing. I think we've, they've been studying this for a while. Right. Just because we know that the statistics of corks, there is actually a statistical fail rate. You can go out, Google it, or whatever. Right. That, that in every case of wine, and when you're buying really expensive wine, and you you know you got a lot of money, and you know you're going to be disappointed that you know you're going to throw out a few of those bottles. Yep. yep. So. Okay. Now we're going to move along. <laughs> on to capital punishment. On, right down the road. Where do you stand? Road. No, I think we're going to ask Ryan about books. Well, I mean, it, <laughs> I think we should ask more about South by Southwest. I want to know what the best parties are. The best parties are the ones that aren't actual official parties. No, are they serving wine there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take off my boot yes. and throw it at you. Okay. You behave now. Generally, the best parties are where people are gathering in some location that's not an actual party. Mm-hmm. So what what will happen is the big parties get completely overrun with people. So you go to the, you know, some big company like Google or Microsoft or somebody will have like a big official party. And you go to that party and the line is like around the building and, you know, three blocks down. So there's, you know, a thousand people waiting to get in. The place probably holds 750, you cram a thousand people in and... You know, you can't you can't get a drink because the lines are really long, and it's just kind of it just kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. So what we found is that, you know, and historically we've used Twitter, and now we're going to use Shazao. But you know, it's really about finding where the people that you want to hang out with are, mm-hmm. and you know where the where the interesting people are hanging out, and it's not the big parties because those are so crowded you can't talk, you can't you know you can't you drink, find them you even can't, if you wanted to, you can't hear anything, you know, you just you can't even it just those just aren't any fun. So you find you know, a bunch of people hanging out in a bar somewhere that's usually probably a few blocks away from the other parties, and and that's where you hang out. So we're going to kind of use Shazow to help people find those and help find each other and, and try to have a good time. So it's the side parties, really? It's the side parties, hmm. yeah. And you know where to find them. You just have to know who <laughs> On to... Shazow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just kind of have to know who to, you know, you... Follow the the interesting people that are people you'd want to hang out with, the 
the Scott Cavitans of the world. He usually knows where the good parties are, so he's a good bet. <laughs> he sniffs um, out. You know, good parties are, are bacon, bacon, you know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. mm, bacon. So he'll help you find one or the other. So are you are you going to do, like, the guerrilla marketing bombing with, like, some Shazow swag or something at South by Southwest we, or just we, make sure? We talked about that, but, you know, yeah. it, it comes down to the fact that we're sort of funding Shazow, not sort of, we are funding Shazow out of our own pockets. Um, so do we really want to spend money on things like t-shirts and stickers and knowing that every other company is going to be that giving those away? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That sounds so familiar. So yep. we've, we've talked about, we've talked about stickers. We may yet do stickers. We'll, we'll see what happens. You know, it's way cheaper than stickers. Surprisingly are those little buttons. Mm-hmm. I like the little strange love live buttons. They're too. a lot, they're less expensive than stickers. I was <laughs> really, yes, I was amazed by the affordability of the button. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, so we don't know that we'll really take swag to South by Southwest. I really think that, you know, the key to Shazow is actually people seeing how it's used and mm-hmm. finding it useful in some way that will get them more addicted to it. So, you know, it's kind of like, you know, Twitter was in 2007 at South by Southwest. You know, we were all using it. We were finding the parties. We were finding, you know, where to hang out with people. And it was really way more, you know, just incredibly useful compared to what I'd been using it for before. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of turned around Twitter for me as well. And I know it did for a lot of other people. So we're hoping we can kind of do the same thing with Giselle. So if you get... (laughs) Cheers. uh, Cheers. Cheers, yes. (laughs) So if you get, uh, like, Scoble or someone using it, right, you know, then then you get the, the, the momentum... Yeah, I mean, you know, I think what yeah. we're going to do is we're going to go down there and we're going to show it to as many people as we can. And, you know, some of us have got our secret Twitter integration mm. plugged in, so we're going to mm. use that as well. Um, I like the secret Twitter, secret in. Twitter <laughs> <Yes>. integration. <laughs> I love that. Cool. Yeah. So how many times have you been down to South by Southwest? This is my third one. The third one? Yeah. Oh. The first one was um, really sort of random. So it was somebody that I didn't know at the time, and she read my blog. And she was putting together an open source panel for South by Southwest that was for people who were new to open source and didn't quite know what it was about but wanted to understand it better. Mm -hmm. So she sent me an email and said, hey, you know, I read your blog. I want you to be on my panel at South by Southwest. I was like, huh, I've never been to South by Southwest. I've heard it's kind of cool. Sure. What the heck? Um, It turned out to be uh, Melissa Camerhart from Blogger. Mm. So she's one of the founders of Blogger. Um, and we've been on a couple panels since then together, and it was it was a blast. I was like, oh my god, I can, you know, I can't believe how amazing this conference is. Um, so amazing that the next year, actually, the you know, company I was working with wouldn't pay for it, and so I actually paid for it out of my own pocket because I thought it was that awesome. So you know, now that I'm a consultant and a mm-hmm. working for a bootstrapped company, I'm paying for it again out of my own pocket <laughs> because it's that it's that good. That's very fun. That's very cool. We are not quite willing to pay for it out of our pocket at this point. No. <laughs> so I was just going to say, I, I thought to myself, where, where's the best barbecue? But then I, I like She's that. The wrong that doesn't work. That doesn't, I what do you do? the wrong person to ask. I know. What do you do? Um, amazingly enough. Aust- you, the reason you're the wrong person to ask is you are a vegan. I am a vegan, yes. Um, amazingly enough, Austin has um, a lot of vegan food. And it actually has some, like, you can get, like, vegan barbecue sandwiches, too, at uh, Joe's, I think. That doesn't surprise me. Raven turned me on to that. Because of mm-hmm. Austin, it doesn't surprise me. Texas in general. Yeah. No. I'm guessing every vegan restaurant in the state of Texas is in Austin. Is in Austin. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been to South by Southwest before, Ryan? I have not, no. Oh, so exciting. Yeah. I'm, I'm really jazzed about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So were you guys just going for the interactive track? Yeah. Yeah. Now when does so the interactive track and then it's followed by the music? Yeah, the way it works yeah. is um, interactive and film go concurrently. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually think that I have a because I'm a speaker. I think I have a gold badge which lets me get into the film stuff too. Generally, I just don't have time for it though. And then the way it works is that once the film and interactive are over, then it goes to music, and then the music runs another four or five days, something like that, after film and interactive are over. I always am tempted to stay for the music piece of it, but it's just such a long time. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, 10 or 11 like, days. You're in Austin, like, for three weeks, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can only handle so much. So much away time. That's right. So I would just ask, did you ever go to North by Northwest when Portland? It was all music, though. I mean, it, there was no interactive aspect no. to it. There was no film aspect to it either, was there? It was just all... I think it was just music. Yeah. Um, I, I never went to it. 
and I, I would love to have something like that back again, and I actually, I talked a little bit to Hugh Forrest about that, he's the guy that runs South by Southwest, um, and he was talking about how difficult it was to run um, North by Northwest, because it was kind of driven out of Austin, and it was perceived as something that they didn't have enough local people involved, and not enough local bands involved, and um, I don't know, I mean, it's something that people have talked about trying to bring back, and so you said the question is, is is it something that, is that type of an event possible to to launch and sustain in Portland? That That's what I don't know. And, and honestly... Maybe with the help of Chazelle. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, you know, I, as someone who organizes a fair amount of events, it would be a hell of a lot of work to pull something off the, the size of, you know, a South by Southwest or, you know, that type of scope where you're bringing in music and film and... Um, and interactive, and I, I think that, I don't know, I really think something like that could work in Portland, maybe not as North by Northwest, but maybe as some other type of festival that was, you know, Portland generated, Portland created, because mm -hmm. we have, you know, we have this amazing tech community, as you guys know, but we also have a lot of really interesting musicians and mm -hmm. a great music community, amazing and film community, I mean, you know, the film festival is just wrapping up now, and um, you know, so many people go to that, and I, I mean, I the animation see, festivals here, too, not just the, I mean... Yeah, I could see something like that being being really successful, but I think in order to have it successful here in Portland, it would have to be kind of created by Portland because it's you know it's such a local community feel and something driven out of Austin. I think wouldn't have the. I, I think that's the key, same right? Mojo. It's got to have the same. It, we like to feel like we've created something yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Well, South by Southwest is. I mean, when you think of South by Southwest, it's Austin. It's the Austin mm -hmm. culture. Um, it was built out of Austin and, and has that flavor. And it, it, it's not that you make a North by Northwest, it's you make something that is Portland. I mean, to a certain degree, Ignite is very successful and very Portland-like. But it's not I mean, of Portland. Well, I guess the first Ignite was Seattle, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. but, but it's really thrived in Portland. And, um, and I think we've made it our own here in Portland. So we took the exactly. original format and we made... Um, really a lot of tweaks to it and really kind of formalized it so that it's a little bit easier to pull off. And we, yeah, we've done some things that none of the others have done. Yeah, so I that's... think we're the only MC-less Ignite. I really like that. I didn't ever realize really? that someone had an MC for Ignite. <laughs> and I was I. like, oh, God, that would be There's so an uncomfortable. MC for Ignite? Yeah. yeah. Isn't it just the guy who goes up there and says a few words mm. and then that's it? In done? Portland, we have the... You, it's actually an Ignite presentation. The right. first presenter is exactly. what is Ignite. What is Ignite? Mm -hmm. And then no one comes on stage again unless they're a presenter until the end mm -hmm. when they say thank you, bring everybody yeah. up. Yeah, and the other Ignites, they actually introduce each individual speaker. So they don't, oh, string, wow. them, they don't string them all together like we did. Oh, wow. Wow. They, they really, you know, so the second presenter comes up and somebody goes up and introduces them and and they switch the slides over. Hey, this is so and so. Wow. Um, and so ours is, is really a different format because, and I don't remember why we started doing that. As I'm looking at, we have the Todd McLaughlin the group of Ignite, man. It's like rapid fire. It's like you know. I really. Jamon, yeah. five minutes go wrong. When I did my Next. talk, there was yeah. something so comforting about knowing that I was going to finish it and get hell off the stage. <laughs> And that when I came on, it wasn't going to have to be any of that awkward, oh, thank you, that's something nice I, that you I, said about me. Yeah. It was all like, okay, get up there, yeah. get it over with, and and get back off the stage. And in my case, hand the microphone to this cat. I haven't, <laughs> you know, I haven't had a chance to, uh, and shout out to Joe Christensen to watch his recording and stream, mm -hmm. who did it this time. A great um, Blaze It Media, Joe Christensen, good friend of mine. Love what he does. AJ nice. recorded um, it and Joe and AJ. It. That's right. Yeah. AJ's mm -hmm. been recording it. But what I the thing you get when you're there live is it's like the guy in the warm up box. You know, it's like you got the person up on stage and you see the next person and they're like like got the bats with the with the, <laughs> I with like the weights the on like in the warm up box up, going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just coming up. I'm and the the bats, volunteers you know? that are like trying That's like awesome. pointing at the people who are still sitting. Exactly. It's like it's all number, standing there up against the curtain, going you're like number five. You better get up, get up. The, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, they it's, have them lined up for like twenty minutes in advance. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's because that's got to be, you know, it's always sometimes it's not what you're doing up on a stage. It's the moment before you get up on the stage, or the moment after you get up. 
mm-hmm. off of a stage, right? Yeah, and this this ignite you know? was really interesting. So every ignite before this, we've actually lost a speaker temporarily, where <laughs> they were you know like next up or two up, and we couldn't find them. Nobody could remember what they looked like. Nobody could. It's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, we just didn't know, you know, where these people were. So I have to say that our speaker wranglers this time. So um, people like um, Betsy Richter, she was um, great. Morgan was great. Um, Joanna helped out as well. So those were our three speaker wranglers. And it it worked. It worked beautifully this time. We didn't lose anybody. And this is the first time. This is a good night, Portland Five. Speaker wrangling is not a job that you could pay me to do. That's just like, (laughs) no way. Not, oh, not in my skill set. I'd hurt somebody. It's sad. Right. It's sad that it's very true. Um, is there anything else we need to cover on After Hours this evening? Well, I mean, I, I'm just, you know, chilling out with the wine. We've here. had so much. <laughs> and, and my gear. We've had Ryan's two sweeties. <laughs> We've had Ryan's two sweeties and all the new gear and the Dr. Normal can. Oh, my God. It's, and the wine. Crazy. And then there was some more talk about wine. And then, if I'm not mistaken, we talked about wine. <laughs> Well, that's a good thing. That's a first for for uh, Strange Love Live. We're big wine enthusiasts, and it's about time we talk about wine. So, what's uh, I mean, what do you, what do you guys got coming up? What's what's on your mind? You know, as far as just getting ready for South by Southwest, or just you have know. you started packing yet? How far in advance do you pack? Check in recovery dot org. No, you can tell you, I mean, you can tell a lot about a person by how often they pack for a trip. There we go. That's true. So I, I pack the night before. Exactly. And at the very last minute, I, yeah. I sort of have it down to a method. Ryan? I have no method. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just happens. not like me. <laughs> You're not like me at all. I start making lists like a month in advance. I'm like, duh, 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 duh. I get the suitcases out, and I'd like test fit things. And then at the last minute, I just throw shit in. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I traveled so much when I worked at Intel. I've got like little travel bags that are always packed that have like, you know, all my toiletries and stuff. And so I just throw stuff in the suitcase and I'm ready to go. It's the one suitcase that you put on, you know, the overhead bin. Yeah, it's not like with the stupid liquid restrictions. I, I can't yeah. I can't get mm-hmm. away with that. You know, the contact <laughs> bottle has too much contact solution in it. It's mm-hmm. not four ounces. And... Actually, I, 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 I have to say, um, Austin Bergstrom Airport, I believe. Is what it's mm-hmm. called. Really nice airport. Really nice airport. I mean, they they've got the Austin City Limits store, and if you fly in That's southwest right. at the southwest I have, gate, I have gifts from the Austin Austin That's City right. Limits store. We've got a nice a Austin lovely City T-shirt, CDs, DVDs, swag from Austin City Limits. They've got like the barbecue mm, stands. Barbecue. They've got the uh, Schlotzkys in there and, mm. and all that. So. It's, it's it's a nice airport. I mean, it's you know comparable to like Portland, which is one of the nicer airports. Do they have the little parking lights though? That's one of my favorite things about the Portland airport. Love that. That Aren't those awesome? Love that. Yes. The first time I saw them, I was just like, "Yeah, <laughs> it's ingenious." Whoever thought of that? Do you know what I'm talking about, yeah, Doctor Norma? Yes. Okay. I, having parked there many times. I know, but you were looking at me like, "Would you stop talking about?" Yeah. You're well, good. that was a different look yeah i happen like, to really like the the parking sensors in the portland airport parking lot garage so is is this the first time you've been to austin right um i've i was in austin a long time ago i don't okay childhood so, so you don't oh I so see. technically I see. yes <laughs> okay okay yeah. so it's 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 you know I, my problem is I, i've been to austin on business trips but I'm never in Austin. I'm never in that place, right, where all the good, you know, it's 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 the outlying areas where mm-hmm. all the tech is at. And then it's usually you're driving out there, you're having meetings and stuff, and then you're driving back, and then you're up to the airport, and then bye-bye, you know. I've taken lots <laughs> of business trips to really cool cities where all you see is, like, the inside of a hotel conference exactly. room. Mm-hmm. Oh, those are the best, yeah. aren't they? <laughs> those are lovely. Yeah, yeah. So what's next? I mean, after Austin, is it like Vegas? You know, <laughs> you can take it on the road, right? You know, um, essentially after Austin, it's just kind of see where the road takes us. Um, uh, really need to kind of see how South by Southwest goes, and and really, I guess, um, uh, just be ready to hit the ground running afterwards in whatever direction that needs to happen. Hmm. So um, we'll find the road signs as we move along. We've got a pretty rough idea of what's going to happen, but what 
actually will happen is is always different than what does you know what you have planned out so we're we're kind of um we have a very loose roadmap well yeah but we've been so heads down on south by southwest that we're just sort of you know let's get we we keep saying well let's get through south by southwest and then we'll worry about that yeah sometime (laughs) we're gonna actually like breathe and celebrate yeah um probably the last night that you're there yeah i think we're doing that tonight at bear and blog right (laughs) Yeah, was that, that was part of you it. You didn't talk at Beer and Blog, or did I miss it? Oh, we did. Oh, you did? Yeah. You missed it. Oh, no, because at some point, at some point, they were yelling and screaming and trying to find Ryan, and so oh, okay. I assumed that was when oh, they were looking was for someone to talk. And they were Sweet. trying to find, you know, hey, Ryan, you're speaking. No. <laughs> oh, and I was like, were... God, did they do, I because I always assumed that they do the talk before I bothered to get there, like, you know, 4.30 or something, but then they, when they were looking for you, it was like, they were actually He's yelling for, for they were yelling for Brian and oh. it was somebody who ordered food and they couldn't find him and so they kept yelling <laughs> Brian to try and find this guy that had ordered this I'm burger sorry, did and not fries. answer. <laughs> Cuz I kept looking and it was it was just because it was Justin that was yelling yeah. and so I assumed it was some, you know, official beer and blog business. And it was like after was after order. the way nice. had walked around through like three times through mm-hmm. all of us asking people, are you Brian? Are you Brian? And so Justin was like, "Oh, it's Brian." I would have been dying if the food was paid for. I was wondering what the hell you were talking about. Now that she cleared that up, I'm like, wow. See, Dawn knew what I was talking you, about. We really haven't had a lot of sleep this week. No. We? <laughs> the strange of live family is sleep deprived. Exactly. <laughs> Severely. Although I did get to sleep in today. So yeah. All good, but still. Um, yeah. So it's really probably just uh, you, you're encouraging the mobile apps and the API. Yeah. Um, so we'll continue to roll out small features with the API. Um, uh, as soon as Twitter gives the thumbs up, then we'll we've mm-hmm. got Twitter OAuth ready to go. So we're just kind of waiting on them Twitter to give the Twitter thumb. OAuth. Yeah. So um, the ability Which means... to um, essentially when you shot with a message, then that can be tweeted. Mm-hmm. Um, so it would be tweeted with um, you know at Green Dragon and then a shiz.me um, link that links back to that specific shout on Shizal. Um, so, um, a couple little things like that that we're, we're kind of working on right now, some little goodies that we're baking for the API, um, that any developer can use and kind of tailor to their own needs. Um, so, uh, little things here and there and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll bring big results. So have you looked at, um, last week we had John Nastos on mm-hmm. the tech edition. Have you looked at his, um, combo he's, tweet? Yeah, he's working on, mm-hmm. and, and he, he, he had some concerns about OAuth and, yeah. and Twitter. Have yeah. you looked at any of that? Or yeah, you... well, um, John and I, uh, well, John talked to me about it, a number of his concerns, and, um, and uh, you know, I got to read his OAuth post and whatnot, but um, he was kind of uh, the inspiration, I guess, for getting it done. Um, exactly. Just, just because I was running into a lot of roadblocks. I mean, starting with OAuth from scratch, it's, it's not an easy piece of technology to wrap your head around. Um, so, uh, seeing him accomplish it kind of gave me that, that last boost of energy, that last, you know, kick in the pants that I needed to, to finally, uh, get the breakthrough that I needed to, to get that part of it done on, on Mm-hmm. 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 Cool. Yep. So, uh, and we're actually looking at that for our API too. Um, so we're, we're really analyzing OAuth pretty hard and we've started developing with it a little bit for the API so that developers can use OAuth um, uh, with the Shizao API. Uh, but we have a lot of security concerns there and um, until we are, uh, until we believe it's the right answer, then I, I, I don't know that we'll do it until we have uh, that firm belief. So that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of John's conclusion as well. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he had, you know, a whiteboard and... That's right. Depends. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's, it's a step above um, what what we currently have, which is basic authentication. Which is, you know, you have right. to give your username and password to whatever application you you want to use. Um, so it's a step above that, but there there are still enough holes in it that that we're just cautious. So I, that's that's what I'm still trying to wrap my head around. Is is it? There's concerns. But at the same time, you're you're um, without OAuth. You're just giving your your password and your credentials, your exactly. name. Exactly. So is it is it you know we suck less or <laughs> or um, it's still there's some concerns and we need to work these things out. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> A little bit both. Um, I, yeah. I think uh, you know it, it, we would suck less, but. Um, 
uh, you know, Mark, Mark is our primary, um, architect, mm -hmm. you know, security guy. Um, and, and he's just kind of going through them, you know, very finely, uh, to, to see, you know, um, where the possible holes are. And, um, if it's something where we need to move slightly off of OAuth, you know, embrace steps one through five, but not six and seven, then right. we, then we might do that. Um, so, uh, we'd rather be, you know, completely standard compliant, but, um, when, when we're talking about, uh, people's location and their, uh, that sensitive information that they provide to us, we need to make sure that we're, we're rock solid. I, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, especially Let, if it's like stalkers. Well, but that's public though, right? No, it is. I know. I know. Or is there a private, I mean. You can you know, set it to be, you can mm -hmm. have private shouts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. could, so the, yeah, so the, so you can at least close down your, your you know. But then the, you're talking to a guy like me. I mean, there's two shouts, right? <laughs> work, home, work, home, work, home. Oh. Beer and blog. On, uh, oh my God, barely, you went to beer and blog. Barely beer and blog. <laughs> oh, stop at the supermarket on the way home. Oh, Cam, he sent me for Thai yeah. food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Barely, but uh, is there a tie-in to the, um, we talked a little bit about um, uh, folks working on Android. I mean, do you see like some automated tie-in at some point? Um, like is Looped an automated service or is that, is that? Um, from what I understand, um, uh, most services uh, require interaction. Okay. Um, and and so um, one of the problems that you have on on uh, some of the phones, like an iPhone, is that you, it doesn't allow background processes. So, right. um, mm -hmm. so essentially, you have to start the manually start the application in order for it to run. Um, well, partly that's the hardware too, because some of the GPS hardware in the phones uh, require a lot of resources and exactly. suck battery. Right. And so it's like they want to fire that up, mm -hmm. get whatever your geolocation data you need from the hardware, and shut it down right, right away. Right? right. Exactly. So. Um, so there are, you know, uh, Ice Condor is a good example where it has a background process where, where it's continually tracking mm -hmm. and, and um, communicating your location. Um, so, so there are a few apps out there that are doing it. Um, it's not something that we ever, at this moment, foresee being something inherent in Chazal. Um, but um, if, if people want to do that, then, then they're more than welcome to. Um, and how that would work is uh, uh, they would just shout at whatever the nearest location is compared to um, what what um, uh, what latitude and longitude they pull back um, through their continuous location tracker. That makes sense. It kind of seems to simplify it. Mm -hmm. I look at the latitude, latitude and longitude. I think people put that as their location on Twitter sometimes. And yeah. It's yeah. just like, come on, people. Yeah. Really? I, yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. I'm always like, what is that? Yeah. All right, well, it has been a wonderful evening and a fantastic after hours. But now I think after hours has become after hour, after after hours. Yeah. After after hours. <laughs> and uh, it's it's now Saturday. So say good night. And you got to let me cue good the night. music up. Good night. Well, I'm giving you the thing that says it's after hours. <laughs> I've got a few more things to do now. So you can, can you milk it a little bit? I like, could milk it a little bit. You know what you're supposed to do? A little, a little, a little, just, you pick up you're the glass. You're not queuing. You're not. No, no, no. Let, let, let me just, just. You pick up the glass of wine. No, no. I'll, I'll use not, my water. No, not the water. And you, you kind of go. Oh, I, and and you know, Ryan, I just wanted to see how the uh, the nose has changed since we've been on. Let's check hours. out the legs. Have we checked out the legs exactly. on this wine? Let's see how they're. <laughs> well, not a lot of cling. That's it. No. Uh huh. See, this is great for the video folk, but and then and then, and then the music cues. Oh, and then there's the music. Finally, thank you so much, Don and Ryan. Join us next week with Liz Grover. Good That's night, right. everybody. Hey, good night. Thank you, guys. Good night, y'all. Thank and you. Good luck.